Dear friends, do not be deceived by this amazing glow that you see in this case. This is a super hard brown cataract and it's a tough case. This patient is a high myope and she has an axial length of 32 millimeters. She has refused to undergo manual small incision cataract surgery and wants to be operated by phaco emulsification. This is a small corneal abrasion that occurred with my cannula. I'm coating the cornea now with 2% HPMC. It appears as though the capsule rexus is already made but that reflex is actually of a dense endonucleus that I can expect now. Dear friends, the viscoelastic that I'll be using throughout this surgery is DiscoVisc which is manufactured by Alcon Laboratories. DiscoVisc is hyaluronic acid 1.6% and chondroitin sulfate 4%. The efficacy of DiscoVisc is comparable when compared to the soft shell technique using Viscote and 1.4% sodium hyaluronate. The link to this study is given below in the description. After burping out some viscoelastic, we are doing the hydrodissection. This is a cortical cleaving hydrodissection and the fluid wave passes behind and we are depressing the center part of the nucleus to bring the fluid anteriorly and rotation is achieved easily. So I begin by trenching and as I am trenching, as I am making this micro trench, I have realized that this is a very hard nucleus and probably the trench procedure will not work in achieving a nuclear practice. I rotate the nucleus by 180 degrees and attempt my first direct chop which I fail to achieve. In hard nuclei, you have to keep trying again and again and at some point you will achieve some sort of separation as I have achieved a partial one in this case right now. The nucleus is quite hard and my chopper is not able to traverse into the deeper planes of the nuclear material. You will notice that my phaco tip is nearly in a vertical position because the anterior chamber is very deep since this lady is a high myope so I am entering almost in a vertical position to do this surgery. I finally manage a complete chop in one quadrant and this gives me some confidence that I can proceed with the phaco emulsification. The trick here is to keep rotating and keep trying, keep rotating and keep trying and I achieve another partial chop in this zone. You've all noticed by now that this is a very leathery cataract and it probably has a very thick posterior plate. Prolapsing the nuclear fragments is a little difficult because I have not achieved a complete separation in the posterior portion. So I'm going a little deep and I'm trying to phaco emulsify the nuclear plate. Let me just improve the focus. So I have managed to prolapse out a part of the posterior plate and I'm going to phaco emulsify this plate and this will probably help me in prolapsing the nuclear fragments out of the bag to do a phaco emulsification. As you can see that was wishful thinking because the fibers, the leathery fibers have not been able to separate from each other with all the maneuvering that I have done. I'm now using the chopper as a scythe, a farmer's scythe. I'm chopping the piece from behind trying to break those leathery adhesions but to no avail. Time to re-strategize. I'm refilling the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. In this case I'm using disco whisk and I'm trying to think what, what I should do now. The wise men would say that convert to a manual surgery, but I'm trying otherwise. Here I'm trying some visco separation if it works. I've exposed some more of my phaco tip to try and get more purchase into the nuclear material. But this 
stubborn nuclear fragment refuses to budge out of the capsular bag. So now I've decided that I'm going to emulsify this nuclear fragment in a piecemeal manner and trim it and reduce its bulk so that I can achieve rotation and similarly emulsify the neighboring fragment. to keep replenishing the viscoelastic in the anterior chamber because this being a hard care track the amount of phaco power that we are using we want to save and protect the coronary endothelium as much as possible you can now appreciate the color of this nuclear fragment as you can see it's almost black like a cataract nigra or a black cataract I'm using my blunt instrument now to try and further fragment this huge nuclear piece that is left behind. You will have started to notice that the pupil has started shrinking now because of the so much supracapsular maneuvering that I'm doing. The effect of the nucleus rubbing onto the iris is causing the pupil to shrink down slightly. If I didn't have enough problems already, you can see the pupil is almost down to 4, 4 or 5 millimeters. So I'm injecting uh, preservative free phenylephrine and xylocaine to try and dilate the pupil. Viscoelastic is further used to enhance this mild dilation effect that I got. Notice that this nuclear plate is so hard that I've managed to punch a hole into it with my phaco tip, but this plate doesn't fold onto itself. In a lesser grade of cataract, if you manage to penetrate through the nucleus plate, it folds on itself and it easily comes into the phaco handpiece and emulsifies, but not so here. So I have to keep continuing my piecemeal phaco maneuvering and finally I breathe a sigh of relief when I see some amount of fundus glow and the last bit of the nuclear fragments are emulsified and sucked into the phaco handpiece. Some persistent small nuclear fragments are still there in the anterior chamber. These are brought forward with viscoelastic. At the same time with my blunt instrument I'm looking under the pupil margin to look for any piece of nuclear fragment that I may have missed while phaco emulsifying them. This persistent nuclear matter is easily emulsified and we go ahead with the irrigation aspiration procedure in a routine manner.
injecting viscoelastic before withdrawing my irrigation cannula. I don't want to cause any additional complications once I've done with the FACO part of this surgery. I'm enlarging the incision to 3 mm because the lens that I'm planning to implant is a minus 4 diopter expand series from Alcon. This is a multi-piece IOL with J-loop haptics. I'm implanting this through a B cartridge. After inserting or reloading the IOL, we are compressing the optic downwards and pushing it forward and using an IOL push here forceps to push it as far ahead into the cartridge as possible. I insert the cartridge bevel down into the incision and slowly push the plunger of the injector. I wait for the leading haptic to unfold before I inject the entire IOL into the capsular bag. I'd like to reiterate at this point that I have no financial interest with Alcon or Novartis or any of their products. Before I push the trailing haptic into the bag, I'm just confirming whether the leading haptic is actually positioned below the capsular axis margin. Once I'm confident, I just dial the IOL into the bag. Again, I push the iris margin backwards to check if my capsular axis margin is overlapping over the IOL optic. I am satisfied with what I am seeing and then I move ahead with the aspiration of the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber.